Welcome once again to a Tin Dog Podcast. As I said a few podcasts ago, I was going to be reviewing all of the Fourth Doctor range. I've already viewed the Antimatter, and as I said, I'm a little bit disappointed when they release multi-disc stories, because you have to wait a month. From part one to part two, you have to shell out twice. A bit like Utopia, and you know what I mean, all that business, where there's two stories that are often linked, and then they follow on from each other. Well, here is a case in point. Release number 2.2 and 2.3, that's the Sands of Life and the War Against the Lan, join together. They both have the same protagonists. They both have, well, let's face it, they're all basically one seven-part story, seven episodes, spread over two discs. Now, I've only heard, at this point, disc one. I'm going to review it, and then pause, and then come back and review disc two once I've listened to that, because they are reviewed separately, and you may just want to buy the first one. It's unlikely you probably want to buy all of them, or none of them. And that's your own choice. So here's disc one of this two-disc story. Both stories are by Nicholas Briggs. Both stories have David Warner and Toby Haydock, and the remarkably good John Leeson, as well as containing, of course, the first Romana. These are Mary Tam's swan songs. And yes, I am still quite tense when listening to the stories, thinking there'll never be any more. But then if Tom had never come back and done them, all we'd have with Mary Tam would be some glorious Gallifrey stories, some great companion chronicles, and that would be it. So let's be grateful for this. Let's not be sad. It's quite a straightforward story. The TARDIS is in deep space, and some sort of energy wave thing is picked up. Romana is psychically connected, communicating with some form of life. Meanwhile, on Earth, the brand new president is also communicating through dreams with a similar sort of life form. Meanwhile, a rather dubious northern man, played by David Warner, doing a voice I've never heard him do before, and his psychic Toby Hiddock, do a remarkably Nider-esque performance, so much more sinister than he comes across in interviews, and a testimony to the great acting from both of them, that at no point do these go over the top, and they so could easily do that. The energy wave hits a space station. People are killed. The TARDIS is in trouble. Everyone seems to be heading for Earth. These giant worm sea cow things from space are heading towards Earth in order to reproduce. Now, in keeping with Doctor Who, you can imply that there's an army of millions of creatures without actually seeing them. You only get to see a couple of them. And because this is Doctor Who, although being on audio, you have to stick with that as an idea. A couple of them have ended up on Earth to reproduce. Unfortunately, the act of reproducing, like turtles, involves being on a beach. Unlike turtles, it involves the release of massive amounts of time energy which causes explosions, which isn't particularly healthy or helpful to anyone else on Earth. David Warner, the man who's been in more sci-fi than you can shake a stick at, is not best pleased. He wants revenge and knowledge and power. He's a classic Doctor Who villain. K9 is kind of limited in the fact that he can't go out on a beach, which has been mentioned and hinted at in the series, so that's not really the problem. And Tom is being Tom, kept completely in check by Nick Briggs for this performance. I would say kept in check, but what I actually mean is guided, prodded, forced to perform in a way that we're used to and that we expect, because we're just as much nerds as Nick. We want Tom to be the fourth Doctor, not just Tom. And let's face it, 40 years later, can you remember how to do your job from 40 years ago with the same amount of accuracy? Probably not. Back to the story. The story is a yarn, a very linear narrative, which is odd considering that it deals primarily with time travel. These creatures are on the way to Earth. They may destroy the Earth. They're in peril. More of them are on the way. That's it. That's your first story. That's the first half of this two-disc story. So yes, I am slightly miffed by the fact that they exist over two discs, but it's not really a crime, is it? For soon, 
we'll have a Jago and Lightfoot, and I've just seen a Dalek on the front of a future cover, so everything's going to be fine. Oh yes, everything. So I'll be back shortly with a review of Disc 2 and the rest of this story. What's the matter? I, 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 I... You heard that voice again, didn't you? Yes, and you didn't. No, it seems as if whoever these creatures are, they want to speak to you, specifically. I am recording this message aboard the conglomerate space platform Fortune in the Proxima 4 system, and this experiment will be our brand's defining moment. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who. The Sands of Life. Let the experiment begin. Energy levels now at five times TARDIS normal and rising past the... What are they? There must be millions of them and they're coming straight at us. Global one alert now. Well, we've no idea what it is, but it's right in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Their eyes. Danger, mistress. Something is making contact with the mistress. Does that sound friendly to you? Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com. Hello. It's a few days later, but thanks to the timey-wimey nature of recording podcasts whenever I feel like it, I've now had a chance to listen to War of the Land, part two of the whole Cuthbert series. Except I've got a feeling Cuthbert's coming back. Now, that's probably more to do with spoilers than anything else. You see... David Warner has done a fantastic job of creating a new northern villain for the Doctor Who. I know that this story still feels more like a setup for something bigger later on, but it's still remarkably good. When listened to these discs, disc one and disc two back to back, it is a really good story. Not startling, not destined to become somebody's favourite big finish of all time, but still something workmanlike, something that you would watch if it was on TV. You wouldn't feel cheated, you wouldn't feel badly about it. I would rank it with, say, The Sunmakers. Now, admittedly, the gender politics of this story is even more on display than in Part 1 and Part 2 and Part 3, which would be the first disc. But the performances still hold strongly, and the narrative still plods along and completes itself. Yes, there's some very nice mentions of some Genesis of the Dalek stuff, was mentioned in the first disc, and I wonder why specifically that's coming along. Perhaps I'm just reading too much into it. I do try to avoid spoilers at the best of times. But the narrative kind of goes exactly where you'd believe it to go. The performances are still just as strong, just as believable, just as sold. Toby Haydock gives a fantastically obsequious character performance, and it is easy in these days of podcast interviews to forget this guy is still, when it comes down to it, an actor. Mary Tam being contacted by psychic time-travelling manatees, is still a performance worthy of the best. So yeah, they're a great pair of stories. So that's disc two and disc three from this whole series. I am, however, desperately excited about next times, because that's Jago and Lightfoot and the Fourth Doctor. What more do you need than that? I, for one, couldn't possibly imagine. So until next time, when we'll be talking about something else, probably something to do with Doctor Who? Yeah, I would say so. Be seeing you. The violence of your people sickens us. Leave us now. Leave us to the sands of life. But you don't understand what you're doing could endanger. Leave us. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Doctor Who. War against the love. Must be one of the Elder Larm, the second of the three. Get back, everyone. Open fire! No, get back! It's happening again. Get out of here now!
Ow! The war with the Lard is about to begin, unless we can put a stop to it. I want that creature cut open. I want to know what makes it tick. If that creature is killed, the entire Lard race will attack. If all of them go on the warpath at once, then there's no chance, you understand me? There won't be time for you to commit genocide. There won't be time for you to do anything except to die. Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Telos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.